Uh, joining me live from Canberra is uh, George uh, Draculis, and uh, he's a professor of nuclear physicists and nuclear physics at the Australian National University. Professor, tell us more about polonium-210. What is it? Well, polonium-210, as it's called, uh, is a radioactive isotope uh, that only occurs in nature through the very long and slow decay of, of uranium-238. Uh, polonium-210 itself has 84 protons, 126 neutrons, uh, but it has a very short half-life. 140 days, so it, it disappears after a short period. Um, so it doesn't exist very much in nature itself. So if you were talking about finding residues of this uh, on a body, that, that would be possible or not? Well, it would be possible, but the issue with um, uh, the short half-life is that, for example, in the particular case you're talking about, it's eight years since um, the material was ingested into his body. Uh, so it's gone down in intensity, in, in radioactivity, by a factor of nearly a million. Uh, that makes it much harder to detect the material. Uh, you wouldn't detect very much material outside the body uh, because uh, the danger of polonium-210 is when it's ingested. And the amount of material you're talking about uh, is only about, something, about a microgram. That's a millionth of a gram. That's, that's enough to kill about five people. So uh, that's a very tiny amount of material. Uh, but it would be concentrated, for example, uh, in the kidneys or the stomach. So if you could analyze the kidneys or the stomach, you would be able to extract some material and with very sensitive techniques, uh, pinpoint whether it is in fact polonium-210. So you'd have to go looking for it. You, you, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't appear on a normal... Um, uh, uh, biopsy? No, I think because it's, uh, if you think about it, it's a very small amount of material. So any sort of chemical test you might do looking for a, a toxic material, uh, it'd be very hard to find something like a microgram, uh, a millionth of a gram, in a body uh, of 100 kilograms. Uh, so most techniques um, uh, would miss it. Uh, but we have very sensitive techniques for measuring very low levels of radiation. So we can measure, in fact, a few atoms of radioactive material. And uh, you don't need grams of it, and you don't need micrograms of it. If I wanted to get hold of some of this in order to kill somebody, where would I get it? Well, I think it'd be very hard to buy it commercially. Um, you can buy polonium-210 uh, as an industrial source, uh, but at the micro Curie level, Curie level uh, to uh, lethal dose something like a millicurie, a thousand times uh, larger. So that's not available commercially. You can make it in a reactor, a fairly simple process. You start with bismuth 209, which is a metal, put it inside a reactor, capture neutrons, and that makes um, bismuth 210. That decays to polonium 210. And with a bit of chemistry, a sophisticated chemistry, you can extract it. And, and the issue, I think, is... Um, you need to remember you don't need very much. You know, only need about a microgram of material. So it's probably not a very expensive process, but you'd have to uh, use a reactor to make it probably. Is there any way you can trace a source of polonium? Well, it depends what you mean by trace it. Um, well, I mean, I mean going uh, back, the material if, it's produced, by, radioactive, if so. it's produced by a, a reactor, a nuclear reactor, it can only be produced by a nuclear reactor, is what you're saying. And I wondered, some materials you can trace back the, to the source, where it came from. It, it, would that be possible in this yeah. case? Well, it, uh, probably not, because, I mean, some, some of this tracing uh, is because you can measure different isotopes. But in this particular case, you only make one isotope, you can tell whether it's come from natural material, from uranium, for example, because then the other associated, associated isotopes from the long decay chain would be there. In this case, when you start with bismuth, uh, you go to polonium. Uh, the bismuth only has a five-day half-life, so it disappears, uh, so that um, you're left with a polonium. When it decays, it decays to lead, 206, and that's a stable nucleus. So you only have two isotopes there. So there's nothing special about a reactor process that would allow you to, for example, trace what sort of reactor it was. 
and therefore track it. You can track it by contamination uh, on people, uh, you know, in, in particular places if they've handled uh, the material in some way. Uh, being so highly radioactive, it only takes a very small amount to leave a signal, uh, for example, through the sweat in a body or uh, the outside of a container or something like that. Fascinating. All right, well, um, Professor, thank you for sharing that expertise with us.